It is always such a privilege to just share with you around the Word of God, so I greet you in His wonderful name. I want to title today's message with a question, Where is the fire? But let us pray first. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, your grace and your mercy. Yes, Lord, and as always, I vow to give you the glory. Father, thank you that we can just look up at you today and say, Lord, speak to us. Touch us, change us, renew us, and set us alight for you and your kingdom. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Now, I want to read a very, very old story to you from the Word today. And then I want to almost retell it in a little bit, in today's perspective, or from today's perspective. But let, me, let us start. 1 Kings 18 verse 17. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal 450, and the prophets of the groves 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long hold ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, Not a word. Then verse 26, And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a God. Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or peradventure he sleepeth, and must be awaked. And they cried aloud, and cut themselves after their manners with knives and lancets, till the blood gushed out upon them. Then verse 30. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near to me, unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And he put the wood in order, and cut the bullock in pieces, and laid him on the wood, and said, Fill four barrels with water, and pour it on the burnt sacrifice, and on the wood. And he said, Do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, Do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran out about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that Thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell, and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood and the stones and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. Now I need you to, to use your imagination, and let us just look at that. It. It, is, it is a dry and a hot day, it hasn't rained for a very long time, uh, on the contrary, it is in the time of drought. It is almost like something out of a, a Western movie, a real showdown at the OK Corral. Everybody's getting ready for this. Everybody's waiting. Except that to the people standing around, they look at Elijah and they say, you know what, his chances are only 850 to 1. Because there were 850 of these prophets that could cry out to their God. But it was only him. And we hope his God can come out. So the hero of the story is outvoted everything according to people. They've already counted him out. The enemy starts first. They try their best to draw a, draw a, a, a Baal's attention. They beg, they plead, they shout, they jumped around the altar. They even cut themselves. Totally tired. Their hopes vanished. You see, dead gods are just dead after all. The prophet even pokes fun at them. He, he, he comes and he says to them, maybe he's just sleeping. 
Do you know that one of the words that he uses when he says he's just out for the moment literally means he's maybe he's just gone to the outhouse. He's just gone to the toilet. He cries. He makes fun of them. Let me take you forward. Because nothing happened. There was nothing. They cried the whole day long. Sadly, if we look at m many churches today, it is just window dressing. The calendars are marked and full of events, yet it is dead works. A lot of noise, a lot of empty promises, buses carrying dead people to church and transporting dead people home again. Meetings, seminars, guest preachers, entertainers by the dozen, but there's no rain and there's no fire. The worship team sings their heart out, maybe we need a new song, another beat, another fog machine, more lights. The pastor preaches anointing the front row with spit, not even a tendril of smoke. The congregation leans back and watch this performance, this spectacle. Check their time on their watches. Those off and wait for the time to pass. Nobody's expecting a miracle. Nobody's expecting anything. The same old, same old has been going on for years. And all of a sudden, a new face enters the arena. The one against 850. But what can he do against 850? You see, they saw one man. They didn't see the army that was standing in the heavenlies with him. They didn't know that his God wasn't dead. But unlike Baal, this God is alive. They wonder, can he get his God to send a miracle? We've been here all day long, so let's just give him a chance. It, it's almost dark, so it won't take that long. Who does he actually think, who does he think he is? Calling the people to make a choice. You choose today, Baal or God. They've proven nothing and, and we doubt whether he's going to prove anything. Calling people to get born again, calling people to get baptized. Calling people to get out of their comfort zones. And now he is here and he doesn't do anything really different. Except maybe, and they didn't know this is one of the most important things that he did. They stood there while he repaired the broken altar of the God of the, that he served. How does God's altar in your house look like? When last have you checked it for cracks? Do you still have an altar in the house where you and your family pray together? I'm not talking about a physical thing of stones. I'm talking about a place, a time, a, 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 a meeting where you say, let us pray. In Afrikaans, it was mooi gehad. Daar was vir jare op die TV, was daar, was daar, a, die aand nies, daar net voor die aand nie, nies, het hulle aangekondig, kom, laat ons boek afvat. Come, let us take the book of God. Come, let us have time around our home altar. But this is what he does. He restored the altar, the start of it all. You cannot bring a sacrifice of praise, of worship, of every, or anything to a broken altar. Restore it. But then he, they look at him and says, this man is wasteful. This, because he's not calling for one, but he's calling for four barrels of water. And he has this process repeated four times. That in a drought? Are you mad? And he wants to pour it over something that is supposed to burn. Oh well, Bell didn't do anything, so maybe there's a method to his madness. But just think on this. Then, no wailing, no shouting. No pleading, just a short prayer. And poof, the fire of God Almighty. Fire that burns not only the wood and the sacrifice, but the stones of the altar and the water. Beloved, what is this fire? This is God's manifested presence. His power in action in and through our lives. It is only His fire that will bring revival, real change, irrespective of our circumstances. Irrespective whether our lives are being soaked, 
completely wet by the sins of this world. If we really come to Him, if we restore the altar in our lives and in our homes, God will move. The church cannot plan for it. They cannot budget for it and buy it. They cannot work for it. And they definitely cannot fake or bring a substitute for it. The Old and the New Testament says that God is a consuming fire. On Mount Sinai, He was the fire and the lightning as well as in the book of Revelation. God didn't age. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. He's not an old grey-haired gentleman sitting in a rocking chair and clicking through the channels uh, to watch what is going on in the world on his big screen TV. No, he's omnipresent, all-powerful. This is the God that we serve. The only difference between the God uh, of fire at Mount Sinai and the vision of John the in the book of Revelation, is that there is now a lamb seated next to his throne. Praise God for our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua Mashiach. When his fire fall, he slaughters sin. When the fire fall, there is power, there is sanctification, there is healing, there is victory. Elijah knew that Elijah, pardon me, knew that without this fire he had no ministry. So he called out in 2 Kings 2 verse 14 as the one that, that, that was to come after Elijah. He called out and he took the mantle of Elijah that fall, fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither. And Elijah went over. Notice that in calling out the Baal priests and fraudsters, Elijah's own life was at stake. His own reputation was at stake. And even more, it cost them of their scarce water. It cost them of their resources. But his faith in his God saved the day. Most churches today are not willing uh, to pay the price. They they, they are not ready for revival. They say they do want it, but they want it to put the spotlight on them, the spotlight on their talents, the spotlights on their gifts, the spotlights on their buildings and their infrastructure. Be careful. Be very careful. Count the cost. May we today, everyone that are watching this short DVD, everyone that's listening, May we, for one moment, also put everything on the table and say, Lord, my all is on the altar, waiting on the fire. Nothing really compared to who God is. Nothing that I've got, nothing that I dream about. Will you stand to me today and call, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy. We thank you that we have got an opportunity today to call out to you and to ask for the fire of the Lord God of Elijah. We honor you and we praise you and we worship you. And we call out to you and say we need you more than ever before. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come in your strength, come in your power. Come with your fire. Burn away the chaff. Let the wheel, hills melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. And let us stand victorious, bringing in the sheaves, so that we can take them home with us when we go to be with you forever and ever and ever. Amen. God loves you. Please call out to the Lord God of Elijah. God bless you.
Victor